All right, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter five is test average and grade. All right, so write a program that asks the user to enter five test scores. The program should display a letter grade for each score and the average test score. Write the following functions in the program. Calc average, or calculate average, right? This function should accept five test scores as arguments and return the average of the scores. Determine grade, this function should accept the test score as an argument and return a letter grade for the score based on the following grading scale. All right, so this is a grading scale, 90 to 100A and so on. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and create these functions first, right? So we'll, we'll come to the program later, but let's go ahead and create this function, calc average. I'm going to call mine, well, I'm, going, I'm not going to use this, this type of, um, uh, basically this dial to name the variable, I'm going to use, use camel case, right? It's pre pretty much the same, you can name it this way, just make sure when you're calling it to use the same name as however you use to define it. So let's go ahead and define a function, calc average. So I'm just going to define a function, I'm going to call it calc average this way, instead of calc average like the way it's spelled here, alright. Oops. Alright, so let's see if it's going to accept in any arguments. Alright, so this function should accept five test scores as arguments. All right, so it's going to accept five test scores as arguments. So I'm going to go ahead and define five test scores as parameters. So I'm going to say score one, score two, score three, score four, and then score five. All right, so let's figure out what this is going to do. It should accept five test scores as arguments and return the average of the scores. All right, so we know it's five test scores, right? So to find the average, is the sum of all the scores, right, divided by the number of scores. So first, let's let, let's let's do it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the sum of all the scores. So score one, plus score two, plus score three, plus score four, plus score five, gives us the sum of all the scores. And we want to go ahead and surround everything so we can get that value first. And we are dividing the whole of that value by the number of scores, which, scores, which is five. And this calculation here is going to give us average. So let's go ahead and store it. We need a place to store that, right? So let's go ahead and create a variable called average and then store it here. And once we have the average, let's see, it says five test scores as arguments and return the average, as average of the score. So it's going to now, now go ahead and return the average. So once we have the average here, let's return it. Return average like that. And we're done with this function. All right, so let's move on to the next one, determine grade. This function should accept a test score as an argument, right? So let's first define it. Define determine grade. I'm going to name mine. It's the same thing, determine grade, but I'm using camel case. Let's see if it accepts any, any argument. This function should accept a test score as an argument. So it's going to accept a test score. So I'm going to say score, okay, score. Um, it's going to accept a variable called score. Like you can call it user score if you want to make it be, be explicit, right? You can say user score. Oh, that's just um, user score, okay, user score. Because that's what the, what the, whoever is calling this method is, that's what whoever is calling this method is going to pass into this function. All right, so let's see what we're going to do in this function. This function should accept the test score as an argument and return a letter grade for the score based on the following grading scale. So now we have to um, figure out the, the, letter, the letter grade based on the score. All right, so it says, um, well, let's start, let's start with below 60. So let's create an if statement here, okay? Let's create an if statement and say if the user score, so below 60, right, is if the user score is less than 60, okay, that's below 60. If it's less than 60, then it says we should return a letter grade, right? A letter, a letter grade for the, for the score based on the following, following scale. All right, so, if the user score right is less than 60, then let's go ahead and return F, right? Return F. Okay, we can use this, uh, uh, yeah, so basically F like this is fine. Um, this is fine. We are returning the string F if the, if the grade is, is less than 60, right? So we can now, let's use an LF, which stands for else if, okay? Else if, what if the, what if the user score is not less than 60? If the user score is not less than 60, then we are dealing with numbers 60 or above. Okay, if it's not less than 60, then it's 60 or above. And for all the numbers 60 or above, we want the ones less than six, less than 70. 
Okay, for all the numbers 60 or above, we want the numbers less than 70, which, which will give us a range of 60 to, to 69. Okay, if the number is not less than 60, then it's 60 or above. So if it's 60 or above, we want the numbers over here, we want the numbers less than 70. So oh, if the user score is less than 70, which gives us, so if anything 60 or above but less than 70, is 60 to 69, right? That's the range. So if that's the case, then let's go ahead and return D, right? We actually, we actually start in the other way around. But well, we can do that. We we can we can do, we can do it from the top too. But you know, I figured, you know, let, let, let's do this. We 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 can we can flip it around too. You know, you just, just all we have to do is change change things around. Um, what, what came to mind was to just do it this way. But I realized you know starting from F on. But it's the same thing. All right. So if the number is not less than seventy, then that means that number is seventy or above, right? But we don't want all the numbers seventy or above for C. We want the number seventy or above, but at the same time less than eighty, which is going to give us a range of seventy to seventy-nine. Okay, uh, any number seventy or above, but at the same time less than eighty is seventy to seventy-nine. So let's have another alif. Actually, let's go ahead and copy this. So if the number, okay, so if the number, let's start here. If the number is not less than 60, then, not, then that number is 60 or above. For all the numbers 60 or above, we want the numbers less than 70. If that's the case, the person gets a D. Okay, if, if the number is not less than 70, then we have, we, we're dealing with 70 or above. Now for all the numbers 70 or, the, or above, we want the numbers less than 80. That's going to give us a range of 70 to 79. In that case, the person gets a C. Okay, now let's check another condition, L, F. If the either score is not less than 80, then we are living, we're dealing with numbers 80 or above. And for all the numbers 80 or above, for B, we, we, for B, we want the numbers less than 90. So 80 or above, but less than 90 gives us 80 to 89. So if it's not less than 80, then we're dealing with 80 or above. 80 or 80 or above. And for all the numbers 80 or above, we want the numbers less than 90, which gives us a range of 80 to 89. And that, that person gets a B. Right? And then... If the if the number is not if the um, not, the score is not less than ninety, then we are dealing with ninety or above, right? We don't want all the numbers ninety and above. We want we want the range from ninety to hundred. So if the, if the, if it's not less than ninety, we are dealing with numbers ninety or above. For all the numbers ninety or above, we want the ones less than or equal to a hundred. Actually, we can do we want the ones less than one hundred one. Less than one hundred one. Okay, so if the number is not less than 90, then we are dealing with 90 or above. And for all the numbers 90 or above, we want the ones less than 101. So 90 or, 90 or above, but less than 101 gives us in the range of 90 to 100. So in that case, the person gets an A. Okay, now else, or we, or we, actually we don't even have to do that. Let's see, determine grade. Um, so we'd have to make sure the person actually ha we can actually make sure the person types um, types in a score of let's say we can make sure the person types in a score of one to hundred we can we can enforce it so that you know whatever score is passed into this determined grade function is actually within the range of one um, within the range of um, uh, actually ha has a max of hundred okay it, it can be anything below but has a max of hundred uh, actually also we actually we don't have yeah, actually, we'll make sure the person types in a number from 0 to 100, right? 0 to 100 for a score, right? We can enforce that outside of this, this, you know, this function. We can do that. So whatever the user passes here should actually be in a valid range, 0 to 100. So we don't have any problems. All right, so we can, we can do that outside the, outside the program. So now this, this, is, this is going to work for the most part. Actually, it's, it's going to work. All right, so it says write a program that asks the user to enter five test scores, right? Now you can use you can certainly use a loop to do that, right? But let's just go ahead and you know ask for the ask for the inputs you know directly using multiple um, uh, print statement. So let's create a function that's going to do that too, right? Although the pro although the program didn't say we should create a function, let's do a, go ahead and do that because chapter five is all about functions. So let's go ahead and, and say ask questions um, or ask for scores. Let's say ask for scores. It's, so a function called ask for scores. It's not going to accept in any argument. All it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and ask for ask for scores. So I'm going to go ahead and call the input function, 
and the input function is going to go ahead and display some kind of a question so let's say please enter score one so please enter score one right now we know the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user sorry about that and allow the user to enter something right and whatever the user types is going to return as a string now even if the user types in a number that number is going to be returned as a string that's how the input function works so we need to actually convert this score to a number so we can use it in this case we want it converted to a float because they, you know with a score the user can type in you know can get 60.5 as a score so we, so we really want to convert the result as a float okay so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to go ahead and call the float, the float function around whatever the user typed here so basically converting everything that the user typed here to a float and then once it does that we're going to get the everything the user typed converted to a float. we're going to get that we need a place to store it I'm going to store this as score one now it doesn't matter if this variable has the name same name as this these variables the scope of these variables is in it's in the calc average function and the scope of this variable is in the axe plus four function they don't see each other although they have the same name they are considered two different variables because they are in two different functions okay so it doesn't matter if they have the same name all right so let's do the same thing for score two all right let's do the same we can now we can, again we can check to make sure that you know the user types in we can have a while loop over or something some some sort to check to make sure that the user enters values from um, from let's say uh, 0 to 100 strictly anything less than 0 it gives you a problem anything greater than 100 yeah, it gives a problem we can do that right we can just use a while loop and say while the score 1 okay or while score 1 is less than 0 or score 1 is greater than um, 100 uh, keep asking the user the same question we can do that um, but for now let's just focus on this and then we'll assume the user is going to be behave and type in the right the right value right <laughs> as a score 2 please enter sc score 2 like that oops let's actually copy this a co couple of times paste it a couple of times and let's close this I was just doing this for clarity but let's close it I think you, I think you should I think you'll be fine all right so score 2 changes to score 3 score 4 score 5 3 4 5 Okay, once we have the scores, we should go. Let's go ahead and return it. Now in Python, you can go ahead and return multiple values. We can return multiple values. We can return score one, score two, score three, score four, and then score five. This way. All right. So when you are receiving these values outside the function, you also have to have variables to receive these values respectively. So what the first variable you 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 um, you use to receive value that we use you, you basically if you also have variables let's say if these variables called these outside of this function receiving the values the first this first variable outside of this function is going to receive the first value that's returned the second var variable outside of this function is going to receive the second value that's returned so the, the variables that you 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 define to receive these values are going to receive these values respectively all right okay so now we're done so let's we're done with the functions so when we call this, it's going to ask for the values and it's going to return them. So let's see. The program should display a letter grade for each score and and the average test score, right? Write the, write the following functions of program. Okay, so let's see. So now let's go ahead and create the, create the program, right? Let's, let's create a main, a main function. Okay, that's going to basically have our program. The main function is the function that is called um, automatically called in most programs that it's, it's automatically called as it's the first function that runs and that function is basically where your program resides so that's your starting point so that's, that's that's the function that calls every other function so the main function is really the function you should define that and that should be called first when you run your program so let's do that that's what we're going to basically you know run our program so define main right and main is where we're going to basically write our program the main is going to call all these functions all right, so the first thing we want to do is let's see, write a program that asks the first thing we want to do is ask the user for the five scores, and, and then we, we have the function for that. So let's let's say ask for scores. Let's have put an S here and call it for scores, ask for scores. 
and we know ask for scores is going to go ahead or two parentheses we know ask for scores is going to go ahead and return five scores so we need variables to, to score, store those five um, store those values so you can also have have variables outside uh, outside of the function basically in main like this we can set it equal to so it doesn't matter if these names uh, match this match these names again these variables are in this function and the scope of these variables are in this function the scope of these variables are in the main function it doesn't matter if they have the same name they don't see each other although they are the same they have the same names they are not they are not really the same they're considered a set of two different variables because they are in two different functions they are like twins but they're not the same all right they're considered different because they are all in two different functions so these var variables will store the five values that will be returned. Score one will be stored in score one, score two will be stored in score two, and so on and so forth. Now we have the um, now we have the scores, right? So we can do this. We can now go ahead and, and, and print. We can now go ahead and print out the details, right? So let's go ahead and create some kind of a table. Um, let's go ahead and create some kind of a uh, table. So let's print out stuff. Now you, you can have a function also that's going to print out the details, right? You can do that. So let, let's do that. Let's create a function quickly here that's going to print out details. Let's say, or print table, print a table. So let's create a function called print table, uh, table of results. And then this function needs, first of all, um, let's see, it needs, first of all, the, the scores, right? When we call it, right? when we call it, it's going to need a score. So let's define five scores for it because, it's, because it needs all of them to print it out. So it's going to need, need, need a score, basically. And then to print out this, this stuff, this is what we want to do. Let's go ahead and print out. Um, a header, some kind of a header, which is going to be this uh, score and a letter grade. So let's print out first a string score. I'm passing in the, what's going to be displayed as arguments. So print score. Let's have a tab backslash t. So when the this is a this is an escape sequence. When it sees the backslash, it's going to look for or expect one of the ex special ex escape characters, which all have a purpose. So a t following a backslash creates a tab. So basically, when the interpreter sees backslash t. It creates a tab. It doesn't print it. it. It creates a tab because backslash tells the interpreter to expect one of the special characters. And when it's one of the special characters, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. In case of a T, it's going to create a tab. So backslash T together create a tab. So again, it's not printed. So score, and then now let's type in letter grade. Like this. 